Hello everyone, I'm Alice and I would like to welcome you to this, the fourth episode of Whistle Bear Yarns from the Farm. Whistle Bear is our small family farm in North Northumberland where we keep Angora goats for their beautiful mohair and Wensleydale sheep for their luscious long wool. We blend the two together to produce our very own knitting yarn. In these yarns from the farm, we try to tell you a little bit about our lives here at Whistle Bear and introduce you to our livestock. If you'd like to know more about us, you can find us as Whistle Bear on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube and Ravelry. In this episode, we are going to introduce you to our very hardworking dairy goats. They're very hardworking because they feed not only their own kids, but all the bottle fed kids and lambs that we have here as well. Then of course we are going to show you what we've been knitting and what we're going to knit. And then we're going to try and explain how it is that even though all kids born at Whistle Bear this year have names beginning with E, somehow we seem to have a lovely little kid called Cassie. After that we are going to give you a little sneak peek of our yarns around Northumberland. This month we have taken a lovely shawl down to the banks of the River Tweed. This is Hannah. She is one of our two pure Sarnans. Out you go. Yes. Sarnans are Swiss dairy goats and they're actually, pure swans are quite rare now so we're very lucky to have Hannah and her friend Misha down there. Um, this year we haven't bred them pure but we will do in the future to breed replacements and to uh, continue to breed. But our dairy girls are very hard working because they produce enough mi milk to feed their own kids and all our bottle fed kids and lambs that we have as well from the angoras and from the sheep. So you're very busy there, aren't you? You are, and you're lovely. Yeah. So this morning we thought we would show you how we milk our dairy goats and uh, then they'll be off out to the field for a day in the sunshine. So in here is Hannah's breakfast and I'm just going to put that on there. This is the milking table, and we'll get her out. And hopefully, she's not going to let us down, she's just going to run straight onto the milking table. Famous last word. Go on, have milk. Happy good. There she is, good girl. And we'll throw the head there. She actually can pull her head out, but she. Oh, Misha. Come on, Misha. <laughs> you are a disgrace. Come on. Your turn in a minute, sweetheart. In you go. Come on, in you go. There we are. Okay. So, every time we milk, I use these special wipes to clean her udder. Really good clean, like that. And then we strip out the first little bit of milk into something that's dark. So I use this grey washing up bowl. And that's just to make sure that the milk looks normal and is healthy. And that looks fine, doesn't it? Good girl. And then, voila. hopefully your goat stands nice and still doesn't put her filthy feet into your milking bucket. Now Hannah's got plenty of milk this morning because in the evening when they come in from the field we take their kids and we put them in a little pen beside their mums but not with their mums so they can't actually drink milk through the night and that way in the morning, their mums have got plenty of milk for us to take and then they feed their kids all day long and have the night to build up their stores again. 
As you can see, fresh, natural goat's milk is a real hit with the kids. And why wouldn't it be? At the end of the day, it's the job of our youngest goat slave to bring the dairy girls back into the stables. Generally, they're pretty well behaved, often standing at the gate waiting for him and plodding serenely back into the stables. But just occasionally, they can get distracted by that delicious salad bar waiting for them outside the studio. So the junior goat slave has to be on his mettle to make sure they get past properly. There's a nice deep bed of straw, a bucket full of supper, and another bucket full of water, and some beautiful fresh hay waiting for them in the stables. So it's not too bad. It's warm, it's snug, and it's bedtime. So what are we knitting? Well, this week I've got quite a lot to show you because Tess has done incredibly well with her shindig shawl. I will show you that in just a minute. But if you remember, um, Shindig was in the anniversary edition of Pom Pom. And the design is by Sashiko Bergin. I hope I pronounced that right. And um, it's very, very pretty here in the magazine. But Tess has decided to do it in our four ply and has done it in lots and lots of blues. And I have to say, I think it is absolutely Lovely. I can't wait for her to finish it. She's just got to do the I-cord cast off and then we can get it blocked and really show this pretty lace. But um, I'm so impressed with it. I think it's absolutely lovely. Very well done, Tess. How am I going to persuade her to knit one for me? That's the question. Meanwhile, so I am still knitting away at my little Nook jersey from uh, the first edition of Lane magazine. But I'm nearly there now. I've just got the sleeves and the neck to do, and then it's uh, ready to roll. I got held up though, because I got a bit distracted. And I got distracted because, as I was telling you about in the last episode, I am going to knit a soiree jumper. And you were all very kindly helping me decide what color to knit. And the general consensus was on sphagnum moss. So here it is, underway. Very naughty because generally I do like to finish a project before I start another one. But I didn't have the needles to do the arms for my um, nuke jumper, so I had to start something else. And that is the slippery slope to ruin, as I'm sure you all know. Anyway, I'm absolutely loving soiree. Had a slight mishap to start with and was knitting myself a lovely Mebius jumper, jumper but we've sorted that out now and um, this jumper it's got these lovely textured center and cables that go up the sides and under the arm so it's really quite unusual and um, it's a real joy to knit the, the pattern is lovely so yes hopefully by next episode I'll have plenty more to show you so next comes the big question of what to knit next. Well, I'm all right because my jersey's still got a long way to go, but Tess has nearly finished her shawl, so she needs a new project. And as luck would have it, very recently, we have acquired Lane Magazine issue two. Again, stuffed full of absolutely lovely patterns, but the one that's caught Tess's eye is this beautiful morning fog. Just a very simple cardi with long sleeves and a drapey body. Really, really pretty. So that is Tess's next project. The question is, what colour to knit it in? I've banned her from grey. She can't knit everything in grey. A bit more colour in life, I think. So Tess is choosing between Bog Orchid and Pure Soul. Both are blue based colours and they look really, really nice on Tess. So it really doesn't matter which one, it's just a question of deciding. So please, once again, if you have any strong feelings, which colour you would like to see Morning Fog in, Bog Orchid or Pure Soul. birthday 
My husband wanted some Indian runner ducks, as they are both entertaining and brilliant at cleaning the worm burden from pastures. Unfortunately, our incubator only managed to hatch one lonely little duckling called Derek. So then the hunt was on for a friend. Enter a little call duck named Fletch. As you can see, they are very happy together. Then along come Del and Rodney. No, not really. It's actually Mark and David, our wonderful builders. Not only are they crack hands at building extensions, but they're not bad farmers either. A couple of weeks ago, we had to go away for the weekend, leaving all our precious animals in Mark and David's tender care. Included was a very poorly little goat kid named Esther. Well, David and Mark became very attached to the occupants of HDU and had rechristened them all by the time we got home. Hence, Rodney the runner duck, Del the call duck, and Cassie the wee goat kid, who I'm pleased to say is doing really, really well now. And while she's a little bit small, I'm very optimistic that soon she'll be able to rejoin the herd. Amazingly, in the two minutes since we were telling you about our knitted works in progress, Tess has managed to complete her shindig shawl. We are so pleased with it that we're featuring it in this month's Yarns Around Northumberland. We took shindig to the banks of the River Tweed below the mighty Royal Border Bridge to tell tales of salmon netting and poaching. So if you would like to hear all about it or to get first sight of our brand new mini skeins, lovely Yevering Bell, about 20 grams each, then sign up for our newsletter either on our website or our Facebook page. So that's bringing us to the end of this, our fourth episode of Yarns from the Farm. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Please do leave a comment. Um, tell us what you would like to see or what you've most enjoyed seeing so we can bring you more. And don't forget, the little studio here is open on Wednesdays and Fridays. So if you happen to be in Northumberland and you're passing and you would like to get a better look at all our yarns and patterns, then feel free to drop in half past ten till three. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed this episode and that you will watch again in future.